to uh, just conclude our section 9.1 part 1 note sheet and the final step here to talk about is interpreting p-values. Uh, so the note sheet says the idea of standing null hypothesis we want to find evidence against seems odd at first. It may help uh, to think of a criminal trial. The defendant is innocent until proven guilty. That is, the null hypothesis is innocence and prosecution must try to provide convincing evidence against the null hypothesis. Okay, so null hypothesis H sub 0 states the claim we are seeking evidence against. It's the claim someone made. In our example, that's never ending. It was the basketball shooter claims he's an 80% shooter, free throw shooter, and the probability measures the strength of the evidence against the null hypothesis. And that probability is called the p-value. Okay, so p-value is the probability that we use to determine how strong is the evidence against the claim or in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so here's the formal definition of p-value. The probability computed assuming h sub 0 is true, we always assume the null hypothesis is true, that the statistic, in most cases for us in the beginning at least, it's going to be p hat or x bar, would take a value as extreme or more extreme than the one actually observed, the one we got in our actual data gathering, in the direction specified by the alternative hypothesis is called the p-value of the test. Uh, that's, uh, that's a mouthful right there. So, any case, I'm going to try and explain this to you uh, in the context of our free throw shooter situation. So we had this graph right here and we said that uh, if the player claimed to be an 80% shooter, in other words he claimed that P, he, the proportion of his free throws that go in or are uh, good shots is 80%, we built this, sam this approximate sampling distribution based on this central claim right here which is our null hypothesis. Then we gathered some data, put the guy on the line, or not on the line, but having made some free throws, and um, he only shot 64%. Okay, So p hat, the data we actually observed, is 64%. And so we said, well, in our simulation, assuming that the person is actually an 80% shooter, if we just uh, um, sample from... Um, all the possible shots or approximately all the possible shots of person who is an 80% shooter, uh, sometimes he won't make 80% and how often will he make 64%? That was our real question. Okay, And based on our simulation, only three times out of the 400 times we made the guy take 50 shots, uh, did he only shoot 64% or less? Okay. So that's where this definition, I'm going to scroll here, I apologize, but that's where the definition says um, take a value as extreme or more extreme than the one observed in the direction specified by the alternative hypothesis. So we had said our alternative hypothesis for the basketball shooter was less than 80%, right? So as extreme as the observed value, here's my observed value, p hat is 64%, okay? or more extreme would be this way. So I'm counting all three of these dots and saying, okay, how often would this happen? And we said three out of 400 times. And we called this last time our p-value. Okay, we wrote p-value there. And so what we're saying is, um, it's very, very unlikely that if I claim to be an 80% shooter that I only shoot 64%. And so because it's so unlikely we came to the conclusion that this claim here, that I'm actually an 80% shooter, must be wrong. The truth must probably be lower than that. Actually, that's what we're thought. Okay? So that is um, what that gargantuan definition there said. This is quite a tricky definition. So I think um, there is an interpretation here, but I think maybe we should write our own. Okay? So... I'll let you read that. You can read that. That's great. But um, uh, what we say, and I apologize, this should be H sub 0 here, not not uh, literally say ho over there. 
It says uh, large p-values fail to give convincing evidence against the null hypothesis because they, dis they say that the observed result is likely to occur by chance when the null hypothesis is true. So if something, uh, let's go back here again, uh, if, if the guy shot 70%, he's closer to his claim, so it's more likely that what he's saying is true. Okay. Likewise, if the person shot you know, somewhere in here, close to 80%, then we would assume that what he's saying is likely true. But in this case, it's better than his claim, so we wouldn't even want to test his claim if he shoots better than his claim. Okay? We're interested in worse because that's the direction of the, null hy the alternative hypothesis, less than 80%. We're only worried about a basketball shooter if he's worse, so we look for less than cases. Okay? And so uh, if we go back here, let's interpret the p-value. All right, so uh, the p-value is the probability of getting a sample result, in our case, a sample proportion, a proportion of shots that made it in the basket from a free throw line, um, at least as extreme as the one we obtained in the data, if the null hypothesis were true, that meaning he's an 80% shooter, and since the alternative hypothesis is this, the sample results that count as at least as extreme are those that are equal to what he shot or less than. We're going less than because this is less than, okay? And so I think, let's try, you could try and memorize this, but I, that's phrased a little bit awkwardly. I'm gonna give you a way to write this down. It's hopefully you can understand this, okay? And, and maybe I'll rewrite my own uh, interpretation here if I don't do a good job. But I think what you should say is this, um, the probability Okay, the probability, probability, okay, assuming that the player is an 80% free throw shooter, okay, um, of him shooting 64% or less, okay, is our p-value, which we had earlier, 0 0.0075, okay? So let me say that again. So we've met all the parts of this definition up here, but it's not that complicated. So what is p-value? Interpret p-value. So they tell you, here's the p-value, it's 0.75. They say, interpret that, interpret this. So we say, oh, what does that number mean? It means the probability, assuming that the null, hyp uh, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, this is the null hypothesis, the player is an 80% free throw shooter, okay? Assuming that the null hypothesis is true, so the probability, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, of the player or him shooting 64% or less, only 64% or less, is 0 0.075. And in our case, it's really low. So we have this bar, and you'll see someone brought it up in class. We call this alpha is 0 0.05, and we say um, if the p-value goes below 0 0.05, now we've kind of had this artificial bar all year, but... Uh, we didn't really formally understand necessarily how this could be very useful for us later on, but here it is now. Um, and we say that this this uh, p-value went below our bar, which is alpha, which is 0.05, and therefore we go, this event, which event? Uh, let me use a different color. This event, shooting 64% or less, okay? This event is so unlikely, okay? It's 0.007. 5% prob uh, sorry, 0.0075 probability of happening. It's so unlikely that we actually doubt the null hypothesis that we assumed to be true, okay? And we would reject the null hypothesis. That's a p-value interpretation, right? That's what that means. So um, this is quite tricky. You're going to have to be good at this. So I would have this type of thing uh, really fresh in my memory all the time. Interpret what does p-value actually mean. 
I've assumed the null hypothesis is true, and the p-value is the probability, after assuming that the null hypothesis is true, of getting a, 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 um, a statistic which, you know, in our case is how many free throws he actually made, as extreme or less or greater than uh, that value, depending on the alternative hypothesis. In our case, the alternative hypothesis was less than. All right, so for the job satisfaction study, the hypotheses are these two, uh, where mu is the difference in, the mean difference in job satisfaction scores, self-paced, my machine-paced, all right, uh, in the population of assembly line workers, the company, data from the 18 workers gave this. So this is my actual statistics data, and there is my standard deviation of the data. That is, the workers rate, rated the self-paced on average 17 points higher than the machine paced. Okay, so researchers performed a significance test and they came up with a p-value. You don't know how they did that yet, but uh, that's the p-value they got. We'll see that uh, later. And so that's the p-value they got. So explain what it means for the null hypothesis to be true in this setting. So here's the null hypothesis. Okay, so the null hypothesis says if the mean of the differences in job satisfaction scores is zero, Okay, the mean difference in job satisfaction scores, that's what this mu means, if that's zero. Well, that means that they have to be equal. Six minus six is zero, right? Mm -hmm. So it means that on average, the um, differences have to be zero, which means that I'm rating self-paced and machine-paced equally, equally. So what does it mean for the null hypothesis to true? You basically say um, the workers have no preference okay, for either self-paced or machine-paced uh, machines, there we go, machine-paced work, right? They have no preference. They say they're the same, self-paced and machine-paced. And if you subtract those, you get zero. And if you average a bunch of zeros, you still get zero. Okay, that's how this happened, the null hypothesis, all right? Um, okay, interpret the p-value in context. What does this mean? All right, so here we go. Interpret, it's probability, p-value is probability. So the probability, assuming that the workers or the assembly line workers, I guess we should be, more specific, the assembly line workers had no preference. Okay, so again, this is my null hypothesis. All right, so the probability, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, of getting a mean. Difference, the mean difference in satisfaction scores, satisfaction scores of x bar equals 17. Uh, now, in this case, our alternative hypothesis is not equal to. So, what is more extreme than 17? Well, if zero, if you're on a number line, zero is here and 17 is here. So we're saying more extreme than 17 will be there. Okay. Uh, so we say of getting a mean difference in satisfaction score of 17 or more, that would be more extreme. Okay. Is uh, 0 0.2302. Okay. So that's my p value and we're interpreting it. So we're saying this is a probability. Assuming that the null hypothesis is true over there, uh, of getting a mean difference like the one we got, here's the mean difference we got, 17 or more, is 0 0.2302. Okay, and then there's a question. Do the data provide convincing evidence against the null hypothesis? So, is this a very rare event? That's the question. Is it a really a rare event? And so the the p-value tells us, no, this happens 23% of the time. 
Now, how they calculated it, we don't know yet, but this event happens 23% of the time. Which event? Getting a mean difference in satisfaction scores of 17. That happens 23% of the time. So, no, it's not convincing evidence against the null hypothesis. This is not a rare event. So, getting this could happen a lot. So, it doesn't tell me that the null hypothesis is false. Okay? So, we say no. Um, you say uh, getting a mean difference of uh, 17 in satisfaction scores. happens 23% of the time, which is quite common. So I don't have any reason to doubt the null hypothesis. I don't have reason to doubt this, because the result I got is common. If I assumed that the null hypothesis is true and the result I got was extremely rare, then I would doubt the null hypothesis, like our previous example. Okay, so that's p-value, guys. P-value is quite tricky, quite tricky. Focus on these things. You have to know how to interpret p-value. But more importantly for our significance test, you need to understand the relationship between what the p-value means for your whole hypothesis test, okay, or significance or hypothesis test. All right, I hope that makes things clear for you guys.